morning. Today, I am going to talk to you about organizations of the future. Since it is about the future, it's going to be a bit speculative. But what I want to tell you is that organizations of today really do not have a future. I'm going to tell you that the future organization is going to be a loose connection of purpose-driven autonomous individuals who will be coordinating and collaborating among themselves by using the invisible hand of the market. And then there will be a lot of automation in the organizations, which will take care of the boring and the repetitive work. But before that, let's ask ourselves, why do we need different kind of organizations? Let's start from the beginning. One of the ancient organizations, about 100 years old, which has been studied extensively, was the Ford Motor Company. The Ford Motor Company was very centralized. It was very rule-oriented, process-driven. In fact, Henry Ford allegedly have supposedly said that, why is it that every time I need a hand or a leg, it comes attached to the brain? I don't need creativity. And Henry Ford possibly understood that his employees did not really enjoy the job that they were doing, but he compensated them better than market rates. So it was a model where you make people do work that they don't like and compensate them by paying them. It worked for him, but it was also later on realized that such organizations destroy your individuality. It was spoofed in a very famous movie by Charlie Chaplin called The Modern Times. It's my hypothesis, ladies and gentlemen, that even today, we have not moved away too much from the very restrictive organization design of the Ford Motor Company. Why do I say that? Just look at what organizations are doing to us. There is a Gallup survey that happens every year annually in order to understand how many employees are actually engaged with the work, how many employees worldwide really love the work that they do. And you will be surprised to see that the percentage of engagement has varied between 13 to 22 percent. Not more than 20 percent, roughly, employees of the world actually remain engaged with the work. They remain disengaged, unengaged, and as a consequence, there is mounting evidence of high stress, bad health. 83% of US employees seem to be working from, seem to be suffering from work-related stress. If you look at the Deloitte survey in India, it says that about 60% of employees are very depressed, sad, and fatigued at the workplace. Why is this happening? High job demand, low job control, long work hours, fear of job losses, and so on and so forth. Are employees being paranoid about this? Are these misplaced fear? Well, I just give you an example without taking the names. This is the most loved company in the world, known for its innovation and creativity, laid off 12,000 employees on a day's notice. And in the same year, they declared $150 billion of profit. Imagine, you're working for this company known for its innovation and creativity. It's one of the most profitable companies in the world, and you are laid off on a day's notice in the most undignified manner. Their very famous CEO came on record saying, that wasn't the right thing to do, probably, not in the right way. And it really destroyed the morale of the organization. But then I hear that the same company is planning to lay off 30,000 more people because of AI-related productivity improvement. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you can be laid off by the most beloved company and the most profitable company in the world on a day's notice in a most undignified manner, would you really blame yourself for being stressed out? So what do we do about it? Professor Jeffrey Pfeffer, who is the Organization Behavior Chair at Stanford University and a very well-known figure in our field, 
He says that if we do the job designs better, keep the employees at the center, then we can actually create a very productive 35 hours work week. That will enable employees to de-stress, take care of their family, and that's one way of looking at it. On the other hand, our beloved Mr. N. R. Narayan Murthy, a very respected figure worldwide for the right reason and the founder of Infosys Technologies, says that the Indian youth should work more than 70 hours a week to compensate for the lower levels of productivity that India has compared to an organization, compared to countries like China. Sounds a bit confusing, right? Now, coming to my own experience, I have found that most of my MBA batchmates, many of them, actually leave their jobs as soon as they can. Most of them strike out on their own. I asked them what's the real reason, and they said, oh, you know what, I really hate working for others. And when I ask them what kind of lives do they lead, I find surprised. I get surprised when they say that they work probably more than 100 hours a week. Some of them are saying they are available 24 by 7. So you see the basic difference here? When you are led by your own purpose, when you are fulfilling your own objective in life, then long hours is not a problem. Work-life balance is probably not a problem. And this is found not only from entrepreneurs, but from players, from artists, from sometimes professors. When was Sachin Tendulkar worrying about work-life balance? Well, sometimes Virat Kohli seems to be worrying about it. <laughs> but into the, the key essence is that long hours of work and work-life balance, stress in the work, are possibly symptoms of a far deeper malaise that we have today in our organizations. We have not changed the organization design fundamentally for the past 100 years. Technology have advanced, but we have not been able to come up with something new that is suitable for the new age, that is suitable for the intellectual pursuits, that is suitable for the knowledge that we bring to the work, unlike Henry Ford's workers who were compensated largely for their physical efforts. But how are we going to do this? Now, economists will tell you that organizations happen when markets fail. What does it really mean? It means that when you are doing a large-scale collaborative activity, then there are a lot of costs of coordination and collaboration. And economists look at markets and organizations, and they say that sometimes this cost of coordination becomes very large in markets. And as a consequence, you build organizations where we can coordinate because we are colleagues, we have a good organization culture, we have rules and regulations. Now, what has happened in the last 20, 25 years is declining cost of information and communication technology. As a result, coordinating through markets has become far cheaper, far easier. And that's the reason why you see new breed of companies, such as the Uber, such as the Airbnb, who are offering large-scale coordinated services by actually connecting individuals, often through market forces. That's the invisible hand that Adam Smith was talking about, not the visible pressure of the manager, of the leader that is typical of organizations. You would have heard about the Linux operating system that has been developed. It's a very complex software product that has been developed without the undertaking of an organization in a very formal manner. Volunteer software developers created this operating system, which today I am sure is the base for more than 50% of world's devices. Are these organizations the ideal of the future? For me, yes. Do they have teething troubles? Of course they do. Are these exceptions rather than norms? I think they are still exceptions. And we need to work around that. But then the, still the big question remains that aren't there a lot of these boring tasks in the organization, the maintenance, the testing, the cleaning bit? Surely nobody can be driven by purpose to do that. Actually, we'll be surprised. Many of us, when we are doing the job driven by purpose, we really don't mind doing the routine stuff. If there is one person inspiration, we are ready to perspire 99%. We work hard in the gym to actually do a good run. On the other hand, there is tremendous amount of automation that has happened. Machines are getting intelligent, 
Robots are doing your work. Software is getting intelligent, sometimes out of the way, but nevertheless. And hopefully, we'll be able to harness their powers to do all the routine, standardized work in organizations. And this is the promise of Industrial Revolution 4.0. This is what the Factory 4.0 is talking to you about, where human beings are used only to control machines. And machines do most of the work, the grunt work, as well as some amount of skilled work. So what am I talking about, ladies and gentlemen, in terms of organizations of the future? These will be a loose connection of individuals. It is the market forces, the invisible hand, which will connect them. And they will be driven by their purpose. They will love what they will do. And a significant amount of the work, which is still routine and standardized, will be done by the machines. Leadership will emerge voluntarily. And it will not be in a very permanent nature. I will listen to somebody. Somebody will be able to lead me simply because I trust his or her expertise. And when I don't do it, I move on and do something else. We as individuals, as intellectuals, will have plenty of choices. And we will choose whether we want to have a 35-hour week or whether we want to have a 100-hour week. We have to move from the model of thinking that organizations are places which will follow the purpose of a few and make others do work which they inherently don't like, don't relate to, and the price that they pay, that they earn for doing that work in a, dis in a disengaged manner is the salary that they make. <coughs> Today's organizations use the labor of human beings, the intellectual capability of human beings to achieve the purpose of a few or to achieve the purpose of an individual. The organization of the future, it's my hope, will be used by human beings and each one of us to achieve our independent purpose, purpose that we will choose ourselves and we will voluntarily contribute to creating important products and services for mankind and the world. That, ladies and gentlemen, will be a blueprint for a far better world which will make all of us happy and successful. Thank you.